COVID-19 vaccines effective against Delta variant. Two poisoning cases reported from South prescribed ivermectin use. Welcome to News at 10 with me, Brendan Lepore. The COVID-19 vaccines used in Malaysia have been proven to be effective against the Delta variant. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Nur Hisham Abdullah said this was based on the fact that vaccinations in Labuan and Sarawak had managed to reduce hospital admissions, intensive care unit ICU bed usage and use of ventilators for COVID-19 patients. Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham expressed confidence that cases in the Klang Valley would also drop once 50% of its population had been fully vaccinated by 31st August. Yet, based on observation conducted, there are already some positive results. He said patient admission in Sungai Buloh hospitals has decreased after the vaccination campaign began for those aged 60 and above. The ministry also seeing a drop in cases for age groups of 40 to 59 and 20 to 39 in the last one week. A total of 300,706 individuals have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine throughout the community vaccine mobilize, or rather through the community vaccine mobilization MOVEC program since it was launched on 26 June. National Unity Minister Dato Halima Muhammad Sadiq said 25 buses have been provided for this joint initiative with the Ministry of Housing and Local Government KPKT. Lepas tu semua kita hantar ke negeri-negeri. Siapa yang aturkan uh, program uh, vaksinasi menggunakan bas Movek bergerak ini? Siapa yang aturkan? Uh, yang mengaturkan program ini adalah uh, kita bawa kepada CITF negeri yang difungsikan oleh ada negeri uh, setiusaha kerajaan negeri, ada negeri EXCO dan uh, bersama-sama dengan uh, Jabatan Kesihatan Negeri dan kemudian dia bawa di peringkat daerah, kita berbincang dengan pegawai kesihatan kanan daerah-daerah dan pegawai kesihatan kanan daerah akan bawa cadangan program. She said this when met after handing over 250 food aid boxes to the Malaysian Indian Transformation Unit in Jalabu, Negeri Sambilan. Earlier, Datuk Halima also checked on the MOVEC program at Dewan Perpaduan Simpang Pertang, Jalabu, where 300 vaccine shots would be administered daily. Meanwhile, she said the ministry had channeled an allocation of 12.4 million ringgit to provide 73,883 food boxes for the benefit of B40 Indian households nationwide. Pregnant women should be prioritized in receiving COVID-19 vaccine jabs to minimize the risk of infections. According to Minister of Women, Family and Community Development, Datu Sri Rina Mohamad Harun, so far about 60% of registered pregnant women have been vaccinated. Ibu-ibu yang telah pun mendaftar dalam Mas Jatra eh, terus diberikan keutamaan eh, untuk mendapatkan vaksin. Ya. Saya difahamkan ada hampir dekat 150,000 ibu-ibu mengandung yang mendaftar untuk kami mendapatkan vaksin. Eh, tapi sehingga sekarang lebih kurang dalam 60% telah pun mendapatkan vaksin dan kita harap bahawa keutamaan diberikan eh, kepada ibu-ibu yang mengandung ini. She said this during a working visit at the Rumah Sri Kenangan. The National Poison Centre has received reports of two people in Malaysia who took the ivermectin drug suffered from acute poisoning. The Health Ministry MOH in a statement posted on its official Facebook today stated that the cases involved an individual aged 35 year old and a senior citizen. The first case involved a 35-year-old individual who experienced shortness of breath for up to five days after taking the drug. The other was a senior citizen who was found 
in an unconscious state, supposedly after consuming 15 of the Mactin pills in one go. Unfortunately, it said, there is no antidote or specific treatment for this case of poisoning and advised the public against taking ivermectin for self-treatment. Intake of yet-to-be-approved ivermectin medication at improper dosage can cause poisoning, as well as adverse effects such as vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and dizziness. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah said, Clinical trials and the use of antiparasitic drug ivermectin for the treatment of COVID-19 are ongoing, but have been inconclusive so far. He said the MOH will begin a study on three types of drugs to treat COVID-19 patients as announced by the World Health Organization, WHO, namely atacinib, imatinib, and infliximab. Malaysia recorded 20,670 new COVID-19 cases as of noon today. Now, this is the fourth consecutive day that the country breached the 20,000 mark. According to Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah, Slango topped the list again with a whipping 6,606 cases. Malaysia also added another 260 deaths from COVID-19 today, while 1,096 are in the intensive care unit. Of this total, 540 have been placed on ventilators. Today's 260 fatalities brings the total number of deaths linked to COVID-19 in Malaysia to 12,228. At the same time, Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham said 17,665 patients have recovered from the virus. Labuan's daily COVID-19 case counts continue to fall to levels not seen since late February last year as the federal territory expands vaccine eligibility to ad all adults and public health restrictions appear to be finally turning the tide. Labuan recorded zero cases today, the first time since the pandemic hit the duty-free island. With this good development, its caseload stands at 9,740 with 149 deaths as of today. Labuan Health Director Dr. Ismuni Bohari said Labuan moved into Phase 3 of the National Recovery Plan, having immunized 91.57% of those listed as eligible for the National COVID-19 Immunization Program, PICK. He added that Labuan previously was among the states and federal territories worst hit by skyrocketing COVID-19 cases, having recorded the highest infectivity rate in the country and with Delta variant cases. Yet to come, KPD and HGB studying prices of COVID-19 self-test kits. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Ministry, KBDN HGB, is working with the Health Ministry to study the prices of the COVID-19 self-test kits. Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Minister, Dr. Sri Alexander Natalingi, said the study was conducted to ensure the kit is sold at reasonable prices and will not burden the consumers. 
In a statement, the minister said KBDN HGP is currently conducting engagement sessions and cost studies of the product and its supply to licensed companies covering every distribution chain, up to the retail level like pharmacies and clinics. Dr. Sri Nanta said the COVID-19 self-test kit has become an essential item for consumers to manage and maintain their health safety independently in the current COVID-19 pandemic situation. He also reminded consumers to be careful when buying the product and always check the list of companies that have been approved to distribute and sell the kit by visiting the official website of the Malaysia Device Authority. Meanwhile, the public has been urged to make an official report should they come across traders selling fake or expensive pulse oximeters. Deputy Minister Dr. Rosal Wahid said although the monitoring of the sale of the medical device that allows people to check their oxygen saturation levels was under the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Health, but the public could also lodge reports to the KPDN HEP. So far, Dr. Rosal said KBDN HEP has yet to receive any official report as there were only comments from netizens about the sale of poor quality oximeters on social media. Ada laporan berkaitan dengan bukan saja oximeter, malah juga alat cek BP ataupun alat apa saja yang berkaitan dengan jurisdiksi kita ialah sirinya palsu. Maka kita boleh mengambil tindakan di bawah akta dagangan. Eh? Dan juga yang kedua berkaitan dengan harga. Harga kalau harganya melampau, kita boleh ambil di bawah akta pencatutan. He also hoped that consumers could provide detailed information such as store name, location and keep the receipt as evidence to facilitate the investigation. Parti Bersatu Sabah PBS is supporting the tabling of a bill to check party hopping through the suggested framework of cross-party cooperation if the vote of confidence in the Prime Minister is approved, as announced by the government yesterday. Its communication chief, Dato' Julita Majunki, said the party believed that the bill could bring political stability at the state and federal levels. Dato Julita, who is also Sabah Assistant Minister for Community Development and People's Wellbeing, said the bill is important and Member of Parliament should support the bill to check party hopping as it will permanently impact the stability of the country and protect the voice and will of the people who voted for their elected representatives. PBS also supports reforms measures to be implemented in the administration if the framework of cross-party cooperation gets the support of the two-thirds majority in the Dewan Rakyat and Dewan Negara. Anti-hopping bills is among seven proposals announced by the Prime Minister yesterday under a suggested framework of cross-party cooperation. National Day and Malaysia Day 2021 will be celebrated under the new normal circumstances again, but with a difference through the use of more advanced di digital communication technology. Communications and Multimedia Ministry Secretary General Datu Sri Mohammad Mentek said, like last year, the 2021 celebration will not involve the physical presence of the public and will be implemented on a small scale. There will be no usual parades and cultural performances for this year's celebration, but instead it will capitalize on digital technology capabilities through the combination of augmented reality and virtual reality. Kita sebenarnya peringkat awal kita telah merancang bilangan yang hadir, jumlah persembahan, bilangan terlibat dengan persembahan. Tetapi bila kita lihat apa ni uh, kes COVID-19 hmm. yang kena meningkat yeah, yeah. maka kita telah kurangkan sehingga ke 65% oh. sebenarnya okay. jadi sebagai contoh hmm. untuk uh, kehadiran tetamu kehormat pun kita dah kurangkan hmm. sehingga ke 48 orang je hmm. termasuk sudah tentu kebah hmm. duli yang memulia Seri Paduka Baginda yang di Tuan Agung dan juga hmm. kebah duli yang memulia Seri Paduka Baginda Raja Pemisri Agung yeah. He added participants were required to undergo swab tests and have completed two doses of COVID-19 vaccines to be physically present for the celebrations. The 2021 National Day celebration will be held at Dataran Pahlawan Negara Putrajaya on 31st August, while the Malaysia Day celebration will be at the Sabah International Convention Centre in Kota Kinabalu on 16 September.
Pride in Sports SIC Petronas to end partnership in MotoGP. Stay with us. The Sepang International Circuit, SIC and Petronas have decided to end their collaboration in relation to the Petronas Sepang Racing Team's SRT title partnership in the Motorcycle Grand Prix MotoGP World Championship. SIC in a statement announced that the collaboration with the National Oil Company will end at the conclusion of the 2021 MotoGP season. Petronas has been the title partner to SRT since 2018 through Petronas Sprinter Racing in Moto2 and Moto3. Before the project was suspended to MotoGP in 2019 via Petronas Yamaha Sepang Racing Team PYSRT. Through the collaboration, PYSRT had a fantastic debut in the Premier Class in the 2019 season, winning Accolade as top independent team and finished fourth in the MotoGP World Championship. In the pandemic hit 2020 season, the team recorded six wins to finish second in the World Championship standings and once again took the top independent team title while Franco Mobidelli emerged as vice champion. SIC said the team is expected to make an announcement regarding its continuation in MotoGP from 2022 onwards under a new independent entity. That concludes this evening's News at 10. Our top story, COVID-19 vaccines effective against Delta variant. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. Till then, I'm Brendan LePaul. Stay tuned to Salaran Barita RTM. Take care. See you soon.